Hey, it's David Elder, and today on Texas Eats, we're traveling around the Lone Star State looking for great restaurants you won't want to miss. Get ready for Vietnamese-inspired Texas barbecue in Houston. Ooh. That's dangerous. You can eat that whole bowl. Plus, we're here at the Outdoor Kitchen with KSAT 12 News anchor Ursula Perry because she's going to be sharing how to make this delicious cheesy Cajun shrimp and grits dish you don't want to miss. And we're pairing Shiner beer with some delicious chicken, duck, and quail dishes at a popular San Antonio wing spot. That's a killer sandwich. That's a lot of food, too. All that and more right now on Texas Eats. First stop on today's foodie adventure is at the Pearl for some house-made pasta and gigantic chicken parmesan. Let's go inside Arosta. Joining us now is executive chef and partner Robbie Nolan out here. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for coming by. Everything looks fantastic. I mean, you got some desserts, you got some savory options, some starters. How did all of this get started here at the restaurant? It's about Italian flair with Texas love. That's really what it's about. So we're just excited to be able to showcase this to San Antonio and the community as a whole. Talk to me about what's going on right here. This is like a starter bread, right? It is. So this is focaccia di Recco. The inspiration comes from the town of Recco, which is next to Genoa. It's like a very, very thin, sort of a lavash style bread, unleavened inside side is like a fermented mozzarella. So it's very, very delicious. Honey, fresh oregano, and sea salt. We're going in. Let's do it. I'm Cheers. sold. Cheers. Boom. That's the bite. Give me some up. Yeah. Woo. No. The focaccia bread is beautiful. It's so tender on the inside, on the outside. You have a little bit of crispiness on there as well. It has good character. You have some of the cheese on there, a little bit of those aromatic flavors as well. It is a great bite and a great way to start your meal. You also have some scratch-made pastas on the menu, and we have one right here. Talk to me about this. So spinach rigatoni. We take baby arrow leaf spinach, blanch it, make a puree, mix it with some Molina flour, and we come out with this really cool textured dough. Sauce, vodka, tomato paste, caramelized onions on top, ricotta the salata, a little bit of parsley. I'm Boom. excited for this. Cheers. Cheers. Boom. Right. Whoa. There are a variety of scratch-made pastas on the menu, and the spinach rigatoni is by far one of the tastiest ones you can try. That sauce on there, oh my gosh, it has that little bit of zing to it on there, a little bit of spice, and then you have all the cheese on top, that creaminess from the ricotta that's on there as well. You mix that all together, you get some of that spinach from the pasta itself, and it is absolutely delicious. You want to get real crazy. We're talking Texas style. Yeah. Talk to me about this chicken parmesan because that's the biggest chicken parmesan I've ever seen in my life. So we're excited about chicken parmesan. So we do a little bit differently here. We do a beer batter. So we use Shiner Bach beer and we create like a flour. We go in flour into a beer batter, back into flour. So it's a little bit like a bread press, but almost like a beer batter as well. And it's <laughs> massive. It's a 16 ounce Yo, portion. That's gnarly. That is insane. Yeah. That is a big piece of chicken. Mozzarella melted on top, San Marzano tomato sauce on the bottom. And look at the inside, just beautiful. Yep, boom, hey, cheers. cheers. Oh wow, yeah, baby. That's yeah. a double fist bump. That is incredible. Thank you. Mm. This is by far one of the largest chicken parmesans I've ever seen in my life. That's like Texas style, right? But it's a chicken parmesan, so you have all that beautiful tomato sauce on there as well. So you have some of the acidity coming off of that all that cheese on there. You have all that stringy, melty cheese as well. And then the crust on the outside, super light and delicate, made with Shiner Bach beer. I mean, it's so different, it's so good. And then that brine chicken on the inside is super tender. Definitely the dish you gotta try. You gotta save room because there's so much more on the menu. But talk to me about this dessert right here. It looks so beautiful. You did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> Hazelnut chocolate cake. So our inspiration behind this was like Matilda, the movie, right? Like this is like really, really moist, rich, dark chocolate cake. But then the mousse that's layered between is obviously Nutella. So hazelnut, the Italian spread that we all have in our pantries. And then milk gelato rather. So a gelato creamy, but milk only, no vanilla. And we're letting the chocolate shine on this one. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. This is where it's at, y'all. Chef Robbie is doing a great job with the Rosta. And I love all the different items that they have on the menu and available to people all throughout the day. And I tell you what, you gotta save room for these cakes and all the desserts that they have. These things are just rocking. 
Arosta, over here by the Pearl. You have to come check him out. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And also there's pastries. You can grab an espresso. Come enjoy yourself. Feels yeah. like you're in like Europe. It feels very European in here. Beautiful. And you just want to stop in and just relax. Boom. There we are. Great job. Thank you. Now, we're headed to downtown San Antonio for this week's haunted restaurant feature. There's been some activity here, but it usually radiates from upstairs. It's no bad energy. It actually just seems pretty chill. I did just hear something, though, and there's nobody else up here, right? There's nobody else up here. Okay. Come on. No, honest to God, nobody's in here. This is... Nobody... Hello? Nope. Nobody's in there. I don't know if he was messing with us, but that was genuinely creepy. Now, we're getting a taste of the top items on the menu. All right, so now we're outside. This is where it's at. You want to relax in San Antonio. You come out here, it's beautiful outside today, and the food looks amazing. Talk to me about what we got going on. This sandwich looks enormous. David, this is a King Guillermo. This is named after me. It has <laughs> shredded beef fajita steak, bacon, jalapenos, and Mexican chorizo. Ooh. With our bread that we prepare here, yeah. some of our special sauces, we will, we'll keep that a secret. Yeah, you gotta have some secrets, yes. right? Here, the King Guillermo, cheers. Cheers. That's the bite. Oh, baby. Oh my goodness. Mm. Imagine a Philly cheesesteak sandwich to the next level. You add chorizo to it, you put on that flatbread that they're making right here in house. It is so good. Oh my gosh, the greens on there, add that little bit of texture you want, a little bit of brightness away from all that savory goodness. And it is an amazing sandwich. And the bread is insane. This was a take on the Philly cheese, but we're in Texas, we're in San Antonio. Wow. I'm, I'm genuinely blown away. This is delicious. This is a really nice bite. It's very over the top, I love it. And now we're gonna jump over here to the Volcano Burger. But why is it called a Volcano Burger? Well, because it's spicy and the wing sauce comes out over it. It has red pepper, it has wing sauce, and it has jalapenos, so it's a bit spicy. But you better be prepared, because that's gonna, that's gonna burn you if you're not ready, right? Yes, I'll cut that in half and we can share it. Okay, let's do it. The Volcano Burger, check that bad boy out. That thing's wild. Cheers to you, sir. Cheers. That's the bite. Oh yeah. If you want something spicy, the Volcano Burger is where it's at. You got the wing sauce, the jalapenos on there, and then you got some cheese. The burger patty itself is nice and thick and juicy, and then you got the buns on there, nice and toasted. If you're going for it, this is the way to do it. I mean, the jalapenos actually give it some texture, but they also give it a kick. Really nice protein in there. You guys know how to make a great burger, and then the bread's toasted all around. I mean, that's exactly what you want. If you're looking for something spicy, the Volcano Burger is the one to order. That is absolutely delicious. We're going from now the sandwiches, the burger, to a pasta that everybody loves, Alfredo. But you guys got jumbo shrimp on the inside. Is this an old recipe? That's my grandmother's recipe. Nice. You want to join me on this yes. guy? That's a serving spin right there. Look at that. The Cheers. Alfredo pasta. Cheers. The jumbo shrimp Alfredo is nice and creamy. The shrimp is cooked to perfection. It has a nice tender inside, a little bit of a crispy texture on the outside. But you mix that all up, you get that bite, get some of the bread on there as well. That's where it's at. If you really want a great pasta, look no further. This right here, the Alfredo is where it's at, man. All right, you also have a lot of different cocktails out here. A blue Hawaiian pina colada, you have a mango nada, two beers right on tap. And these are monsters. Look yeah, at that. they look good. This is where it's at. Now, but why food? What got you into restaurants? You know, when I graduated from college, I didn't want to be an accountant. All my life, I worked as a dishwasher and paid my way through Central Catholic and ETSA, and I figured, well, if I can do it now while I'm broke, I'll do it, and that's what I did. That's awesome, man. Yeah. You have done so many stuff here. Family recipes that are just out of control. Sandwiches, burgers, pastas. But right here, the reason for the season, why people want to come out, the pizza. Look at this. The margarita pizza. Cheers, sir. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. 
This is just a classic pizza bite. Basil, tomato, cheese, and the crust on there. I mean, this is a great example of a delicious pizza. When you think of pizza, when you think of Italian pizza, those flavors, this is so good. Thank you so much for having us out here. Thank you, David. You guys, Guillermo's right here near downtown San Antonio. If you come out here and you dine inside the building right behind us, you might hear some stuff. Who knows? It might be a ghost. Maybe it's just somebody walking around. I don't know. It's kind of creepy over there. The food is absolutely delicious. Grab a drink. Enjoy yourselves. Um, I'm going to keep eating, and uh, we won't go back in that room, though, upstairs, okay? Thank you, guys. <laughs> Coming up later on Texas Eats, popular Austin brunch diner serves up classic American brunch dishes with a twist. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's awesome. And next on the show, traditional hand-pulled noodles, authentic dumplings, and sweet bao buns just outside of Houston. I'm a pork belly fiend. I'm going for the right. pork belly. Yeah. Cheers to you. Yeah. All right, Japanese-style noodle bowl, here we go. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here in Pasadena to go inside of a restaurant that's serving up traditional Chinese-style hand-pulled noodles, and they're doing it in all different kinds of ways. Let's go inside Noodle Master. Joining me now is Ta Yang. He is the general manager out here at the restaurant. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for coming in. Of course, man. And right in front of us, I mean, you have noodles, you have different kinds of dumplings, you have bao buns, steam fried goodness, plus some wok fried food as well. But how did all of this get started? Where are these recipes from? Uh, these recipes uh, originated from northern China. This style of making noodles, especially the hand-pulled noodles, it goes back thousands of years in Chinese history. It's a tradition that very few people nowadays know how to do. So when we started this restaurant with the recipes, we wanted to keep this tradition alive. This one, though, right in front of us, you said is your top-selling noodle bowl. What's the name of this one and what's in it? This is uh, called our house spicy beef noodle soup. We have a beef broth that is made on a daily basis. Uh, along with uh, the braised beef. It's beef that is cooked all the way through. But this looks great. So this one's a little spicy. I mean, you can see the yeah. little like oil kind of floating to the top. Yeah, this is our <laughs> homemade chili oil. Beef noodle bowl, that's the bite. Yeah. Oh, give me some elbow. Boom! Now, the noodle bowls, you can get them. There's a Chinese preparation on noodle bowls. You also have Japanese preparation on right. noodle bowls. Absolutely. And that's like what's going on over here. Yeah. It's like a ramen style, right? Yes, it's exactly what it is. It's taken from uh, Japanese style, but the noodle, they're all hand pulled. That is incredible. You got a little bit of pork belly on the side here. Right. I'm a pork belly fiend. I'm going for all the right. pork belly. Yeah. Cheers to you. Cheers. All right, Japanese style noodle bowl. Here we go. Whoa. <laughs> what up? <laughs> Mm. All of the hand-pulled noodles are fantastic, whether it's the Chinese style or the Japanese style. They have the different kinds of protein that are in each soup as well. You have that spicy beef. You also have the traditional Japanese style ramen dish with some of that pork belly in there. It is all delicious. You can't go wrong with any of these noodles. Talk to me about your soup dumplings. What makes them special? So the soup dumpling, what makes them special is that they're wrapped with the soup inside of them. To find this kind of style of soup dumpling, it's not very readily available in the South. Now, you don't just use your chopsticks on these, right? There's actually no. a proper way to eat the soup right. dumpling. How exactly. do you do that? So what you do is you take the soup dumpling, you put it inside the ladle. Pop it? Yeah, you oh, have to look. pop it so the juice would I got it. Look at that. Yeah. You drink the juice. OK. Wow, that is like super concentrated flavor. That yeah. is so good. Yeah. After you drink the juice, you add a little bit of the vinegar, a pinch of uh, ginger. And now you just eat the whole thing. Yep. Cheers. Cheers. All right, the proper way to eat it. Oh, wow. You also have some regular dumplings, right? Right. And bao buns, right? Bao, yep. Talk to me about these ones, because you have some different versions here. Let's start with this one. This is our pan-fried dumpling. On the bottom, it's, it's really crispy, because it's designed that way. But if you flip it over, it's still nice and soft, But because we want that contrast. So, OK, so now we get this. You just dunk it yep. in this. this what is, is this, like this a chili a, oil? This is our sweeter chili oil, dumpling oil. The name tells you what to do. It says dump it, right? You That's just dump, dump it right it in, in there. there. All right, cheers. Cheers. Wow. Mm. wow. It's this fresh dumpling. It would taste different from what you would get 
at your frozen store are dumplings. If you never had fresh dumplings, then the textures might be a little bit different for you. It's that dough, it's so fresh, but then it just melts. Noodle Master is doing such a great job at showing you what traditional Chinese noodles are supposed to be. All this hand pulling, stuff that's been handed down through generations and generations from centuries ago. You get to have a little piece of history out here. It's my favorite kind of history. It's the kind you can eat. You have to say maroon for dessert, because you have a very special one right here. It's yes. full of chocolate, right? Yes. So talk to me about this one. So this one is made almost exactly like the Baos, but instead of being filled with stuffings, it's been filled with chocolate. I'm going to go in with this one. Y'all, Noodle Master out here in Pasadena, Texas. Cheers to you. Cheers. Come check them out. They have so many different items on the menu, something for everyone. You got the noodles, you got the entrees. You have the different kinds of ways you can prepare the Baos and the dumplings. This one's got chocolate in it. That's the bite. Wow. <laughs> this is crazy. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much for having us, no, man. No, thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Coming up later on Texas Eats, we're here at the Outdoor Kitchen with KSAT 12 News anchor Ursula Perry because she's going to be sharing how to make this delicious cheesy Cajun shrimp and grits dish you don't want to miss. And next on the show, popular Austin brunch diner serves up classic American brunch dishes with a twist. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's awesome. Don't go anywhere. Texas Eats continues when we come back. Mm. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here in Austin to go inside of a breakfast and brunch diner that's serving up delicious food, and they've been doing it since 2017. Let's go inside Phoebe's Diner. Joining me now is the chef and partner out here at the restaurant, Camden Sturzenberger. Thank you so much for having us. We have some of the hits off the menu, right? How did all this get started? We were having a baby. Her name is Phoebe. She was born August of 17, and we opened the restaurant in September of 17. According to my dad, I've been talking about opening a breakfast restaurant for like 10 years. <laughs> and you finally did it. You did it. Well, tell me the story behind this dish here in the front. Chili Rayano, very traditional dish here you could find in Central and South Texas, but you put your own twist on it. Um, I was like, man, how can I make this breakfast? So it's stuffed full of uh, smoked cheddar cheese, scrambled eggs. The outside of it is a red corn tortilla and gluten-free panko. Everything that goes into our deep fryers here is gluten-free. Oh, nice. So it's got that crispy golden crust around it. The, uh, the ranchero sauce is our version, and we drizzle with some fresh creme fraiche and uh, cotilla cheese and cilantro. All right, the chili relleno out here at Phoebe's. Cheers. Cheers, guys. That's the bite. Ooh. Mm. The chili relleno is slightly smoky, it's delicious, the crunch on the outside is perfect, the pepper on the inside has a good body to it, good little bite, and on the inside just load it up with all that egg, super tender, you have all the potatoes on the side as well, the sauce on top, the cotija cheese as well, a little bit of cilantro on there, it is a great bite and it's going to fill you up. What is this dish and how is it prepared? This is our brisket Benny. Uh, buttermilk biscuits, chopped brisket. Uh, it's got a coffee rub on it. The hollandaise we make here is closer to like a bearnais and a little bit of lemon juice. Barbecue sauce with green onions on the top just for a little pop. And then the hash brown casserole is awesome. It's uh, shredded potatoes, smoked cheddar cheese, a bechamel, and a whole bunch of onion and garlic. This is the brisket Benny. There we go, that's the bite. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that's awesome. That's incredible. The brisket barbecue Benedict is a great dish. On the base of this whole thing, you have the biscuits that they're making in house. Cause you got the brisket on there. Then you're gonna put the hollandaise that they're using apple cider vinegar in there, not just lemon juice for the acidity. And then on top of that barbecue sauce, kind of like the Carolina style. And then you have the egg yolk that busts out of there as well. It is a great dish. It's up there with the best of them. So this isn't just French toast. What are you doing to this one special? So it's a sourdough bread, thick cut sourdough bread. We marinate for 24 hours in a custard base, like an anglaise. So it sits there, soaks up all the egg, all the vanilla. We put brandy in it, so it's got a little bit of a boozy hint to it. So then we take that out and we deep fry it. Uh, we make chantilly cream, whipped cream on the top, fresh berries. And then syrup right on top. Y'all are killing me out here, man. This is awesome. Here we go. Cheers, Cheers. to you. Deep fried French toast. That is really, really nice. The deep fried French toast, I've had a lot of French toast, never had it deep fried, is delicious, crunchy on the outside, comes with that cream on top, you have some of that syrup on there as well, the berries, 
It is a great bite, and there's a lot of food on this dish, so you better come hungry. Now, this is actually our last dish that we're gonna be trying, but it should be your first dish, right? Talk to us what's inside. So this is our South First Tots. It's our version of nachos. So it's uh, tater tots. We put a red-eye gravy on it, and we top that with an over-easy egg, Swiss cheese, and then we put the guac on there, the, the house pickled chilies we char, all the chilies on the grill, and the cotilla on the top. Here we go, cheers. This is the tots. This is how you gotta start your meal out here. This is absolutely incredible. There's some different starters on the menu. I highly recommend the tots. You get the egg on there, the jalapenos. You get the red-eye gravy on there as well. It is phenomenal. The guac, the cheese on there, everything just melds into this perfect bite. And it's like this super brunchy breakfast bite that you're looking for. You get some cocktails with that, solid, game winner. Camden, give us some love, brother. You guys are killing it out here. Phoebe's up here in Austin, multiple locations, but you know, it's just delicious. Anyone you go to, this is where it's at. Cheers to you, brother. Cheers. Thanks for being here. Of course, thanks for having us, my goodness. Coming up later on Texas Eats, we're pairing Shiner beer with some delicious chicken, duck, and quail dishes at a popular San Antonio wing spot. That's a killer sandwich. That's a lot of food, too. And coming up next on Texas Eats, we're here at the Outdoor Kitchen with KSAT 12 News anchor Ursula Perry to make her cheesy Cajun shrimp and grits dish. I'm so excited. you got to check it out. This looks phenomenal. You guys, don't go anywhere. Texas Eats continues when we come back. Mm. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here at the Outdoor Kitchen and joining us today, KSAT 12 news anchor extraordinaire, Ursula Perry. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for inviting me. I got my LSU apron <laughs> yes. on. We're ready to go to work. We're making some magic out here. We have some delicious looking food. It smells amazing. What are we making? We are making my famous cheesy Cajun shrimp and grits from scratch. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I want to dive in right now. We have two forks on the side. I'm itching to dive in and try it. Talk to me about this process, though. What's the first step you do to make this? Okay, we start with instant grits. Normally, grits take a while, but the instant grits are just as good. We make it with chicken broth, not water. And when they have solidified, we add the cheeses. We have cream cheese and cheddar cheese. Oh, come on. So it's cream cheese. That's a kicker, because see, I don't put cream cheese in mine normally, but that's why they look so creamy. Yeah, and this is a very quick recipe, because basically all you're doing is you're chopping up some onions, some bell pepper, some celery, some green onion, some garlic, and you got that off to the side, and then you slice up your sausage. You can either use andouille sausage, which is how I make it. That's very traditional for Cajun food. But HEB's got something called Three Pepper uh, from its Heritage brand that actually will do the trick, and it actually tastes pretty good. So I have a mixture of those two in here right now. And you can taste the difference, but I think altogether it creates a beautiful aroma. And then, of course, you have your shrimp, which is a jumbo shrimp. You want the biggest you can buy. And you season those up with some Old Bay seasoning and some Tony Satras, of course, my cousin. I have to do a plug. <laughs> this is your own commercial within the segment right yes, there. This yeah. is, this is uh, my great, great uncle. Uh, and my grandmother was a sashery. And this is how we cook. So you just get this stuff for free then, right? No. No, OK, you still got to pay for it. <laughs> When you're building those flavors though, uh, here you use a cast iron pan and you put the sausage in first, right? It's kind of like grabbing some of those elements from the, the sausage on there, then the shrimp goes in. What are some tips you can give some viewers at home on how to make the shrimp so it's not overcooked? So after we do the sausage, we've already got a nice little glaze of uh, fat that's been rendered from the sausage. That's what you're gonna put your shrimp in. So it should already be a hot skillet. You only need to put it in that skillet on each side for about three minutes or less. Anything more than that, you're gonna have rubber shrimp and you don't want that. Now, after all of that, what's the next step? That's when we're gonna get our seasoning vegetables in there, your onion, your bell pepper, your garlic. We're gonna saute that in all of that beautiful stuff. And if, it's, if your pan is a little crunchy on the bottom, we're gonna throw a little chicken broth in there to deglaze the pan, which is important because you want all of the goodness to come up into your veggies and mm -hmm. back into the dish. Now, 
after all that, you kind of mix it all up and then you yeah. serve it, right? You can do it that way, which is, uh, you know, family style. Uh, sometimes when I have company, I will uh, have each element separate and I structure a plate that's really beautiful with the shrimp a certain mm. way and the sausage a certain way, but it's all going to taste the same and it's delicious. <laughs> and I love what you've done here. I mean, look how beautiful this is. You have that bed of cheesy grits on the bottom and then on top you have the sausage, the shrimp, you have all those veggies on there as well. Put a little lemon on top to make it look pretty, but it also adds a little bit of brightness and acidity when you take that bite. You guys, this recipe is so delicious and you've made it look, you make it look so easy. It is easy. If you, can, <laughs> if you can stir a cast iron pot with stuff in it, you can make this dish. And to get more information about this recipe, follow the link on the screen, ksat.com slash Texas Eats. Grab a fork, Ursula, we're going in. Going in, all okay, right. Here we go. I want a little bit of everything and look at this, super creamy grits on the bottom. Look how big this bite is. I know, I'm going for it. Here we go, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> the cheesy Cajun shrimp and grits, here we go. Give me some love. Mm. Boom! Phenomenal. Blow your mind. You're gonna be a rock star when you make this at home. Absolutely incredible. You've outdone yourself again. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks to our friends at the Lone Star Barbecue Pro Shop for supplying us with everything that we need to get grilling and smoking out here. And if you want to barbecue like a pro, just go check them out. They're in Lotus. You have all their information on the screen right here. You can get all kinds of seasoning, sauces, cast iron pans, everything you need to be a professional in your own backyard. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Shiner has sent us on a mission to travel all across the Lone Star State getting ice cold beer and pairing it with delicious food. And that's why we're here in San Antonio to go inside of a restaurant that's using some of the Shiner beer in recipes. Plus, they have so much great stuff on the menu. Let's see what's going on, Gold Feather. Joining us now is Alyssa Perez. She is the manager out here at the restaurant. Thank you so much for having us. Hi, thank you for coming. And right in front of us, man, we got all the good stuff that you want to try when you come out here to Goldfeather, including ice cold shiner. Talk to me about Goldfeather. How did all of this get started? Goldfeather originally opened in August 2020. So our whole concept when it came about is to do craft beer and craft chicken. So we want to offer fresh quality food and also local beers that you can actually get at a one-stop shop. So chicken sandwiches, that's like the focus of how this all got started, right? Of course. And right in front of us, I mean, you have some of the items on there that are brand new on the menu. And I want to look at this one. What is the name of that? So that's actually going to be the chicken birria torta. Uh, what we have is a toasted torta bun, garlic aioli, lettuce and green cabbage mix. And then we top it off with our chicken marinated and birria seasoning, salsa, tomato, and avocado crema. All right, so you grab that one. I'm going to grab this one, the chicken birria torta. Oh, wow. The chicken birria torta is made with Shiner Bach beer, and it has that really nice flavor in there. It's subtle, but it's there. Lots of nice spice on there as well. I mean, the sauce and the crema that's on there, the tomatoes and that toasted torta, everything just works together really, really well. That's a killer sandwich. That's a lot of food too. All right, let's pop open our drinks. Cheers. Cheers. All right, so talk to me about this one. What is the name of that? So that's actually going to be our quail nest with shoestring fries, some quail topped on top of that, some koopy mayo, sticky sauce, and some jerk slaw. All right, so you grab one. I'm going to grab this okay. guy right here. The quail's nest, bed of fries. Oh, cheers. cheers. Oh, wow. The quail's nest is a fun way to start your meal out here at Gold Feather. You have those two quail legs and they're fried. So you have a nice crunch on the outside. And then you have that sticky sauce, a little bit of that Japanese mayo on there as well. I mean, you're getting a little bit of sticky sweetness, tiny little bit of heat, but that mayo just rounds it all out so it's nice and savory. This is a great buy. I'm gonna go for another one. <laughs> The third item that you have out here on the table of your new items, looks like a loaded tostada. What is the name of this? So it's actually gonna be our pibil duck tostada. We have two tostadas, black beans, avocado crema, duck, pickled saw, queso fresco, and topped off with some cilantro. I mean, the queso fresco that's on the top there, you have all those pickled elements, you see the jalapenos on there, and the duck. You know this is gonna be money. All right, oh, I'm gonna yeah. pick this up. You grab yours. Uh -huh. Cheers to you. Cheers. All right, that's the bite. 
The duck pibil tostada has great flavors. I mean, this thing is loaded up. You have all those different pickled elements. You have the beans on the bottom, and then you have that duck. Super tender and flavorful as well. Now, this comes two to an order, and I promise you, you will not need anything else after you eat this. These are huge. You also have some holiday themed chicken and waffles on the table. It's like kind of a spooky season, so you got some Halloween on there. And this is actually pumpkin flavored waffles. Gold Feather is using Shinerbach products and some of their new items on the menu. Of course, you can just grab an ice cold Shiner when you're here as well. And don't forget to get their chicken sandwich, what they're known for, that Nashville style sandwich. Plus, when it's spooky season, you come out here, you get the pumpkin waffles with all the little sprinkles on top. That's a great place to bring the whole family. Talk to me about Shiner and that partnership and what it means to be able to serve Shiner here in the store. So with Shiner, with their huge variety of beers, it allows us to actually pair them with a lot of items on the menu that we actually carry. Nice. You guys come out here to Gold Feather, over by Target here on the north side of San Antonio. I mean, you can get chicken and waffles, chicken sandwiches, and their new items. I mean, the chicken birria torta is money, and they're cooking it with the beer. I mean, it's so good. And of course, grab a Shiner when you're out here. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. All right, come check out Gold Feather, y'all. Don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back after the break. Welcome back to Texas Eats. The beef-loving Texans have sent me on a mission to travel all across the Lone Star State to check out restaurants that they've featured on their new season of their hit show, Barbequest, now streaming on Hulu. And that's why we're here in Houston to go inside of Blood Brothers Barbecue to see what kind of beef items they're serving up on the menu. Let's go check it out. Joining us now is the co-owner and pit master out here at the restaurant, Kui Hong. Thank you so much for having us out here, man. Thanks for having us on. And right here in front of us, we have some of the hits off the menu, including items that you have featured on the show, Barbequest. Brisket, you have the brisket fried rice, spring rolls, and a burger. But talk to me about the restaurant. How did all this get started? Uh, just started amongst three friends. Um, really had no idea we were going to open a restaurant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> started as a pop-up. It started as a way to share good food, good music, and good drinks with friends. I want to talk about this fried rice. How is it prepared? What's inside of it? Talk to me about the flavors in there. So that's our brisket fried rice. That was one of the first things I used to do at steak night. But when we got to the restaurant, uh, Robin actually jazzed it up a little bit. All right, well, get a spoon or a fork, yeah. however you vibe. Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right, cheers to you. Cheers. Oh, there we go. Don't spill it now. Give me some love, bro. Woo! That's dangerous. You could eat the whole bowl. The fried rice has so much beef flavor on the inside and the texture is incredible. All the veggies in there have the nice little al dente texture you want on there, but then the rice is nice and fluffy, so it's a really good contrast on there and balance. The beef that's in there, it just is popping with a lot of flavor on there. Definitely a side item that you have to try. Spring rolls. You even have a little dipping sauce on yeah, the side. Yeah, so this Talk is to me about um, these. beef belly spring rolls. I Ooh. take beef belly, uh, actually do a rub that's um, inspired by like pho spices. Grab one with me. Yeah. We're gonna go in, the sauce on the side. I mean, beef belly. You don't really hear that too often. That's yeah. a very unique item. Cheers to you. Cheers. There we go, spring roll. Mm. Oh my gosh. The, the belly, the meat, and the mint. Insane together. It's that like aromatic flavor that just cuts through a lot of that fat. Yeah, the pickled carrots wow. and daikon help mm. with that a lot too. And the sauce, you have to dip it in the sauce. Yeah. These spring rolls are so soft and delicate, but on the inside, that beef belly has so much flavor. And that mint, oh my gosh, that's where it's at. And then you have some of that daikon on there as well. And you dip it inside of the sauce. It's a little sweet, it's a little savory, and it's got a great flavor on there. Definitely a great representation of what you can do with beef when you're thinking creatively. These two items, including a couple others, you had featured on the show Barbequest. Talk to me about that experience, filming with them, being on Hulu, people coming in seeing they saw you yeah. on, on Hulu, like what's that like? Man, it's been awesome. It was great to be able to showcase um, our out of the box items. And our whole thing is using flavors that we grew up eating, you know, whether it be Vietnamese, Chinese, I mean, Thai. What makes your brisket special? What are you guys doing a little bit different? Honestly, our, <laughs> our brisket is really just, there's no, you know, it's funny people come in here and say they taste this spice and that, but it's, really not there. So there is a little secret on there though. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, a little bit. But, but, 
but a little bit of mystery. Yeah, <laughs> but it's typical spices. There's nothing crazy, you know. And you can see this. I mean, a beautiful smoke ring all on the outside. That bark is just really nice, and I mean, clear cut on the inside as well. That this has a nice marbling on there. I think you pull on it. Look at that. I mean. I didn't even really have to tug on that thing. Came right apart. Go ahead yeah. and grab some brisket with me. You have two sauces on the side, of course, representing 34th. You yeah, know, you gotta so, do it. And then you have SWAT sauce. So SWAT's uh, Southwest A Leaf, Texas. That's where we all grew up. And then the Houston 34 is our homage to all the sports legends that wore 34. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. All right, here we go. I'm gonna try the SWAT sauce yeah. with the brisket. Mm. I love the SWAT sauce. That was our original sauce. That vinegar just cuts right through that fat, mm -hmm. and that protein really gets to shine through. You guys gotta come out to Houston, go to Blood Brothers Barbecue, they are super creative. The food is just wild, it's delicious. Check them out on the new season of BarbeQuest. The QR code is on the screen, scan it right now. You can also follow the link on the screen as well to get more information about the barbecue joint. Thank you so much, man. And you guys, I mean, you got the bow buns, you guys got a little bit of everything yeah, out here. Yeah, a little bit of everything. And you got a burger, so I'm gonna grab this burger. Yeah, chow down. Blood Brother Barbecue, come on out here. Mm. Oh, wow. That's a great. Give me some more, brother. Yes, Go sir. Ahead. Give me some foot. Bam. I love it. Texas Eats will be right back. So much for watching today's episode of Texas Eats. And to get more information on all the restaurants that you've seen, plus a map, just go to our website, ksat.com slash Texas Eats. And don't forget to follow us on social media at Texas Eats TV, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to join us every Saturday right here on KSAT 12 at 10 o'clock in the morning, because this is how Texas Eats.